Yeah! <laughs> 
Huh? 
phenomenon, Anna. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, 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 huh? Hmm? Oh! 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 Oh!
Um. Ah! <laughs> 
Today, I'm one of the most popular girls at magic school. But it hasn't always been this way. You see, my dad, Triton, is the ruler of the Undersea Kingdom. My mother passed away when I was a little kid. That's why dad has taken care of me since my early years. On the one hand, he spoiled me with luxury. On the other, his parenting style was super overprotective. I couldn't make my own decisions. I had no say in the choice of friends, clothes, and even books. He was sure that homeschooling has been a safer option for the future undersea queen. So I wasn't allowed to go to regular school. Also, he hired security guards to watch me wherever I go. They kept other creatures away from me, especially boys. When I was 10 years old, our neighbor Mermaid Boy tried to give me a card on Valentine's Day. And guess what? My dad made his entire family move to another ocean. I've never been on a real date and never been kissed. My only true friend was my starfish, but I didn't lose hope. And one day, a life-changing opportunity knocked on my door. I found a cheerleader's flyer from a magic school, which is located out of the sea. I got so inspired by those happy faces. I needed to become one of them, so I decided to spend my senior year out of the sea. I was shaking while trying to get my dad's permission, but he just tore the flyer, gave me a cold, arrogant look and said, Don't even think about it! For the first time in my life, I got the courage to stand for myself. I yelled, You cannot tell me what to do, Dad! I'm an adult! But he laughed in my face and left for an urgent business meeting. That was very painful, but I didn't give up that easily. Later that night, I snuck into his closet and took a potion to turn my tail into legs. Early in the morning, I ran away from the palace. Thankfully, my car worked well in both worlds. On my way to school, I imagined how much fun I would have. Oh gosh, I was so naive. In my first geography class, I made a laughing stock of myself because I didn't know any countries other than the underwater kingdom. My legs were so inconvenient that I fell in the middle of the cheerleader audition. Pinky, the head of the cheerleading squad, said, But you're a princess. Why are you so bad at dancing? They kicked me out, of course. At lunch, I ate paper napkins because I thought they were food. Love Boy posted this video and it went viral in a blink of an eye. Even my cousin still sends me the napkin lady memes. I was hoping to meet real friends here, but everyone avoided me and whispered behind my back. When I tried to use a water fountain, it splashed me and I fell to the floor because my legs turned into a tail. Everyone stared at me and laughed. So embarrassing. I decided to leave that school for good and never step on dry land again. But at that very moment, I noticed a tall guy in the crowd. He smiled at me, and my heart melted. He said, Hi, I'm Bully, the strongest guy in the school. Let me help you. While he was carrying me in his arms, I decided to give that school another chance. My heart was throbbing. We were having intense eye contact. This is when I heard my father's voice. Yep. It took him just a few hours to find me. He looked furious. Very carefully, Bully put me on the floor and disappeared. As calmly as he could, Dad asked me to come back home. I didn't want to let him win and said, No, Dad, I'm gonna study here. 
He replied, You won't get any gifts or pocket money until you leave that school! Can you believe that? Later that day, at the parking lot, I learned that Daddy had taken the car too! It was a disaster! I've never traveled on foot. I tried to walk a couple of miles, but the shoes hurt my feet! Suddenly, Bully popped out of nowhere and offered me a ride. We talked and laughed a lot. Bully made me laugh so hard that coke ran out of my nose. <laughs> and just after that, I noticed a gold heart-shaped locket on Bully's chest. I said, this accessory is too girly for a matcha guy like you. Bully was confused and replied, This is my mom's locket. She passed away when I was a child. I was very much ashamed of that question. We drove the rest of the way in silence. My gloomy dad met me on the shore, and Bully said a hurried goodbye. The next day, I went to school again. At lunch, a cafeteria worker told me that I had to pay for my food. But I didn't have any cash. Suddenly, Bully handed me his sandwich and smiled. Every girl at school had a crush on him, so they got furious when they saw him helping me. I bounced on the sandwich so greedily that ketchup smeared across my face. Bully laughed and started wiping it off my lips. Our eyes met, and there was a very awkward pause. I offered Bully to sit next to me, but he gave me a stern look and sat down at Pinky's table. They were chatting like I didn't even exist. I lost my appetite and felt like the dumbest girl in the world. After classes, he was waiting to give me a ride as if nothing happened. That time, I spilled coffee on myself and burned my hand. Bully gently took my hand, blew on it, and then kissed it. The... What was that? That weird game between us continued for several months. Bully always appeared when I needed his help and disappeared just as suddenly. He never paid attention to me in public. I couldn't figure out whether he liked me or not. So, I used all sorts of tricks to test his feelings. Touched his hand accidentally, faked falling in front of him, and so on. Once, I asked him to fasten a zipper on my top. Bully was slowly pulling the zipper up. And then, all of a sudden, he kissed my shoulder! Caught by surprise, I abruptly raised my hand and broke his nose! I caught his loving eyes many times, but still, usually he acted very coldly. One day, he was driving me to the shore as usual. When he stopped the car, I lost my patience and asked him directly, Do you like me or not? He looked very sad and opened his mouth to say something, but my overprotective dad showed up before Bully said a word. Bully squeezed my hand and said goodbye. Later, I opened my fist and saw his mom's locket. I was on cloud nine. He truly liked me. He was just too afraid of my dad. Later that night, I found old letters that my dad wrote to my mom. And gosh, my dad was such a poet. He even signed, XOXO, your sweet turtle, <laughs> at the end of each letter. And then I got a genius idea. To find a girlfriend for my dad to leave me alone. Hmm, but who? <gasps> my teacher seemed to be the perfect match. The easiest way to introduce them was to break school rules. So I pranked the teacher. And she called my dad. They had a private conversation after the classes. After that, Dad invited my teacher to a restaurant for dinner. That was so awkward. He laughed nervously and splashed her face with juice. However, she looked happy. I've never seen my daddy like this. He was so cute and awkward. The next week, Dad was too busy with his brand new girlfriend. So Bully and I could hang out without being afraid of my dad. We visited many places, but still, Bully didn't act like my boyfriend. One day, Bully invited me to a school dancing party. I didn't want to go. I was sure that my classmates hated me. But eventually, they apologized for being so mean. Pinky promised to help me become a cheerleader. 
and nerd offered to help level up my grades. Finally, I felt welcome at school. Bully and I had a slow dance, and I thanked him for being so kind to me. I moved closer to kiss him, but he moved away and said, Mermaid, we need to talk. I didn't let him finish and kissed him. Bully hugged me back tightly. Next second, my dad popped out of nowhere and began to yell at Bully. I paid you for protecting my daughter, not kissing her! What? Is this true? I looked at Bully. He nodded, looking like a guilty puppy. He had been lying to me this whole time! He was just making money! I looked around. Everyone was staring at us. Some even filmed this scene. I couldn't stand it anymore. So I pushed Bully away and left the party in tears. Later that night, I was crying in my room. Bully betrayed me in front of everyone. My father ruined the party, and my life too. I was sure if I show up at this school again, they'll pelt me with mud. Suddenly, Dad knocked on my door. I expected him to start scolding me, but he looked very sad too. It turned out that my teacher broke up with him after that ugly scene at the party. I'd never seen him so honest and vulnerable. So I hugged him, and we had a long, honest talk. He gave back all his gifts and promised to stop being so controlling. After that, I felt more confident and decided to graduate at any cost. I went to school the next day, preparing myself for the worst. But nobody even remembered my epic fail. I tried my best to avoid Bully, but there he was, waiting for me in the hallway. He said, Please forgive me, mermaid. I really like you a lot. I I couldn't ask you out on a real date because I, I felt ashamed that your dad paid me. I was a coward, but I'm not afraid anymore. I wanted to hug him and hit him at the same time. He handed me a car key and added, Please accept this little gift. I've spent all the money I earned on it. Bully took me to the parking lot and showed me my new car. I told him, Well, I'm not quite ready to forgive you, Bully. But we can hit the road together. Which we did. By the way, my dad kept his word and gave me my freedom. In return, I convinced the teacher to make it up with him. And they're still together. Just like Bully and I. Ah! 
days ago, I had everything girls my age could dream of. I worked as a model, and my boyfriend Love Boy was the cutest guy in the school. And just look at his brand new car! It's luxurious! <laughs> Everyone thought I had the perfect life, but I didn't. I felt out of place among the popular guys. Parties were often boring. And then I realized that all the Tauruses are even worse than the Scorpius. And all the Stevens are handsome! <laughs> but that wasn't the worst thing. Sometimes, popular guys were really rude to other students. Once, they hung Dorky by his underpants on a locker. I wasn't satisfied with my life. And one night, it changed forever. We got together at the house of the richest girl in our school, Lexi. It was just a regular party. Except for the spoiled pepperoni pizza. Then I saw Nerd in the corner of the room. She was the smartest girl in our school. It was strange to meet her there. Nerd and Lexi didn't get on. I noticed Nerd felt very uncomfortable. So I decided to walk over and talk to her. When I took a step towards Nerd, Lexi and Candy appeared behind her with a huge bucket of slime. They were holding it right over Nerd's head. I pushed her out from under the bucket and all this green goo fell right on my head. There was silence in the room. But in a second, all my friends burst out laughing. My boyfriend was laughing louder than anyone. God, I didn't know you wanted to be a loser so much. Only Nerd didn't laugh. She handed me her hanky with sympathy. I grabbed the hanky and ran out of the room. I tried my best not to burst into tears in front of everyone. After that, I left the party, of course. On the way home, we had a big fight with Love Boy. I asked him why he hadn't stood up for me. Love Boy said, Babe, you should take it easier. To be honest, it was your fault. You were in a great prank. You know, this prank was cruel. You're acting like a jerk. Love Boy abruptly stopped the car and said, Since I'm such a jerk, you might better get home on your own. I jumped out of his stupid car and slammed the door. Love Boy's car went out of sight. And only then I realized I was in the central park of our city. The most dangerous place you can imagine. Whoops. I was walking out of the park, lighting up the road with my phone. It was the stupidest idea. Two huge trolls came out from behind the bushes at me. Nice phone, honey. What else interesting is in your purse? 
I took a step back, tripped, and fell down. Stupid heels. Two trolls' shadows hung over me. Suddenly, someone jumped out from the trees and knocked one of the trolls down. This mysterious stranger was wearing a mask. Just like a superhero from a movie. The second troll grabbed my phone and ran away. But the stranger didn't lose his head and threw my purse at him. Wow, that was spectacular! I tried to see his face, but he modestly turned away. Unbelievable! This guy just saved my life, but he was still shy. Then he said, uh, I'd better walk you home. It's a dangerous place. Of course I agree. To be honest, I wasn't afraid at all anymore. I just wanted to spend time with the stranger. On the way home, the stranger asked me what I was doing in the park alone at night. I replied, my boyfriend and I had a fight, so I decided to walk. The stranger frowned for a moment, and then I said, with my ex-boyfriend, I guess. I could have sworn the stranger smiled, and my cheeks flushed. How did you know I needed help? Have you been stalking me? This is the most dangerous place in the city, and I often patrol it at night, from my viewpoint. And where is this point? The stranger smiled slyly. But instead of answering, he definitely put me on his shoulder and raced through the park. I squeezed my eyes shut in fear. The stranger was rushing so fast that I even felt a little sick. When I opened my eyes, we were in the highest booth of a ferris wheel. The gloomy city park looked like the most beautiful place in the world from there. Then I looked down. The fear of heights made my head spin and I fell right into the stranger's arms. He smelled of fresh grass and rain. He almost kissed, but I threw up right on his shoes. No, what a shame. The stranger was taken aback for a second, looked at his shoes, and laughed. He said, I love pepperoni pizza too. I got embarrassed, but I felt the stranger's soft eyes and started laughing too. We were near my house when I noticed a beautiful flower growing on the top of the tree. The stranger smiled. And in a couple of seconds, he was on the tree. Wow, this guy was very dexterous. As soon as I thought that, the stranger flew down. He caught his clothes on a branch and hung upside down just like Spider-Man. I took the flower and smelt the rain and freshly cut grass again. We were almost kissing when the first ray of the rising sun got into my eyes. The stranger twitched, fell down shouted that he had to run and disappeared from sight. I watched him go and didn't understand anything. I hope it didn't smell like vomit. The next day, I intended to find out who was hiding under the mask. I was sure it was someone from my school. When I turned away from the locker, Love Boy was in front of me with a huge bouquet. Baby, I'm sorry. I was wrong yesterday. I shouldn't have left you there alone. Let's forget about that. I was furious. You put me in danger yesterday. I don't want to be your girlfriend anymore. Love Boy was in shock and didn't say anything. I even felt a little sorry for this guy. I was watching guys in gym class, but none of them was anywhere near as agile as the stranger. I even tried to find him by scent. Uh, uh, it's definitely not rain and freshly cut grass. But I was quickly kicked out of the men's locker room. The nerd noticed my strange behavior. I don't know why, but I told her everything about last evening. To my surprise, the nerd didn't laugh and even agreed to help to find the stranger. When Lexi saw me and nerd together, she laughed at me like I was the biggest loser in school. I pretended I didn't care. After school, we went to the park. Nerd noticed that the stranger was shedding and offered to follow the trail of wool. Wow, she's really the smartest girl in our school. We followed this trail and came to a house in the evening. I knocked on the door, but it wasn't the handsome stranger who opened the door. It was dorky. There must be some mistake. The sun went down in a second, and Dorky turned into a stranger from the park. Wait, did I fall in love with Dorky? 
stranger stretched out his hand to me and wanted to say something, but I chickened out and ran away. The next day, I tried to avoid Dorky. To be honest, I felt pretty uneasy at the thought that we almost kissed. I really liked this guy, but I was still scared of what the others would say. I couldn't decide what to do. At the big break, I turned on my favorite song for the whole dining room and climbed on the table. Everyone was looking at me. I took a deep breath and shouted, Dorky, I like you! Everyone stared at me, but Dorky looked the most shocked. He just mumbled. Uh, thank you. Huh? Love Boy angrily turned the table over. I can't believe you left me for this! Everyone was laughing. Lexi was the loudest. What's it like to be dumped by the ugliest guy in school? <laughs> it hurt me. But that time, I didn't run away. I came down from the table and sat down next to Nerd. Although Dorky dumped me, I had a real friend. We had fun. And most importantly, we supported each other and weren't shy about being real. The doorbell suddenly rang, but I wasn't expecting any guests. I opened the door and the stranger came in. Or how I was supposed to call him now. Why have you come? Just listen to me, okay? It wasn't me in the cafeteria. It was Dorky. We shared the same body with him. When the sun's up, I turn into Dorky. I'm kind of a werewolf, but we're different people. He's not in love with you, but I am. I didn't listen to the end and threw myself into werewolf's arms. Guys, get a room. <laughs> we burst out laughing. And what are we going to do about it? Hmm. I have an idea. Being friends with the smartest girl in school turned out to be not only fun, but also useful. After some failed attempts, we managed to separate Dorky and Werewolf. I was no longer the most popular girl in school, but I had a real friend and the best boyfriend in the world. Hmm? Huh? 
Hi guys, I'm Dark. 
And since childhood, I've lived in the shadow of my famous twin brother, Light. We're twins, but it's hard to imagine two people as different as we are. Light likes to be the center of attention. And I'm an introvert. When we were kids, Light climbed onto the table and sang, pretending his spoon was a microphone. Our parents took his talent very seriously. So he visited every possible talent contest in the country. As the years went by, Light's fame grew extensively. Our parents turned into glamorous producers. Meanwhile, I turned into the family Cinderella. I was responsible for all household duties because they traveled a lot. Light was far from an excellent student. But everyone at school loved him and craved his attention. One day, he failed a math test, but the teacher said she would give him an A+, if he posted their selfie on his Instagram. Light seemed to be Mr. Perfect. But in fact, he's been suffering from bipolar disorder since childhood. Early fame and a busy concert schedule made his issues even worse. His fans weren't aware, of course. When the depression phase consumed Light, he could lay in beds for days. He was feeling pessimistic about every single thing and cried a lot. I had to do all Light's homework in those periods and find the time to support him. I was the only person he could stand in this phase. Our parents preferred to stay in denial about Light's issue. When he felt depressed, they just said, Get yourself together. You don't want to let so many people down. Light has never even tried to stand for himself. One day, I lost my patience and told them, It's hard to be a high school student and a famous singer at the same time. My mother's reply was, quote, you're just jealous that your brother is famous and you're not. Stop being so selfish. But real struggles began during manic phases. Light turned into a hyperactive guy and got into all sorts of trouble. It was my job to help him out because Light was too afraid to disappoint our parents. One night, his message woke me up. Light sent me his geolocation and asked me to pick him up from a party. When I got there, I found him locked in the trunk of some crazy fangirl. Another time, Light called me from a beach. Some fans stole all of his clothes and phone while he was swimming. He had to put a rubber ring on. When we celebrated our 16th birthday, our parents ordered a huge cake. But it said, Happy Birthday Light. I asked, Did you forget anyone? Dad replied, The cake should look good on Light's social media because the 16th birthday happens only once in a lifetime. Once, Light had to attend an important press conference to advertise his future concert. On the eve of this event, I found him crying on the floor. He begged me to go instead of him and pretend to be Light. I didn't like that idea, but Light looked very sad. So I said, Okay, but only if you promise me that we will talk to our parents and make them take your mental issues seriously. Light hugged me and agreed. The conference was a nightmare, especially for an introvert like me. Fans asked all sorts of silly questions. They wanted to know Light's favorite shampoo, color, and even the size of his socks. Suddenly, a fangirl climbed on the stage and began to hug me. The guards tried to drag that girl away from me, but then a huge crowd of fans followed her example. Each tried to tear off a piece of me. I ran away, but the crowd followed me. I was ready to be trampled. But then some gloomy girl put her hand on my shoulder and whispered, Hurry up, get in the box, I'll get you out of here. I jumped into a huge box with some lighting gadgets. The box was on wheels, so she took me out of the building easily. In the street, she opened the box. Finally, I saw her face and it was very pretty. She turned to leave, but I invited her to hang out. She agreed and said, Well, okay, I'm creepy by the way. I forgot I was playing light and replied, and I'm dark. She laughed and said that my name was too famous for such pranks. We had a perfect walk in the cemetery. And then she took me to her favorite restaurant. They served a cake that looked like a human brain. So cool! I know it's not fair, but I decided not to confess that I pretended to be light. Creepy was my soulmate, and I felt it right away. I'd never been so happy in my entire life. I didn't want to disappoint her. I walked Creepy to her house. There was an awkward pause. 
She caught my eye for a moment, and I quickly looked away. I gathered up the courage and kissed her. Creepy snuggled up to me and said, Oh, what? I jumped away from her, casually said goodbye, and went home. Huh? I totally forgot that Light had been waiting for me at home for a long time. But when I came home, he began to yell at me. Paparazzi took a bunch of pictures of me and Creepy. Fangirls trumpeted all over the internet about Light's new mysterious girlfriend. Light accused me of being jealous of him and called me a miserable loser. To be honest, I was crushed by his ingratitude after all the things we've gone through together. I just went to my room and locked the door in silence. For the following month, I kept on secretly dating Creepy, still pretending to be Light. I brought her to the quietest places to stay away from Light's fans. One day we had to hide behind a huge trash can, but Creepy called that location authentic. She's so sweet. But eventually someone still licked our pictures. Junk media reposted them with silly headlines and awful memes. Light and I were at odds and didn't talk to each other. He was furious and decided to take revenge. He took pictures with some glamorous model pretending that she was his new girlfriend. I rushed to Creepy's house. She opened the door. Huh? Oh. Huh? Oh. And show me the pictures right away. Creepy asked. Who is she? I didn't know you had a girlfriend. I was so stupid. You used quiet places for dates because you didn't want to show the world your dirty little secret. She was crying. I opened my mouth to tell her that I'm not light. But I chicken out. I couldn't believe that she would accept me as dark. So Creepy just kicked me out and blocked me everywhere. Aww. I went home alone. I had no idea that I was capable of feeling so much pain. Suddenly, I noticed the paparazzi following me. So I decided to prank him. I stole an ice cream van. And I'm not proud of it. In fact, I didn't have to because the seller was Light's van. He just gave away the van with a silly smile because he thought I was Light. In a blink of an eye, this picture appeared in all tabloids. But I still wanted to get back at Light. I put on a Sailor Moon cosplay costume and made an official statement that my new name was Sailor Light. After that, the captain of school football team even made ice at Light in the locker room. The fans and press were shocked, as well as our parents. As for Light, he pretended that I didn't exist. Parents grounded me. The following day, Light was having an epic concert and they forbade me to go. I was sitting alone in our room. I felt bored and very angry. So I began to kick Light's stuff. Then I scrolled my Instagram feed and saw our parents chilling on the beach. Those bastards went on vacation instead of supporting Light. My brother is just a sensitive teenager and he's all alone out there. I noticed a picture frame that I kicked from the desk before and picked it up. These two little cuties made me realize that my grounding would wait. So I hurried to the gig. Light was on the stage, but he looked very anxious and was singing off key. Suddenly, he dropped his microphone and ran backstage. I followed him to the dressing room. When Light saw me, he said, Hey bro, I guess you're the only person who's always there for me no matter what. Aww, that was so touching. We cried and hugged. Then Light added, It's not fair that you've been in the shadow for so long. You should sing with me today. Although I wasn't that skillful, we sang pretty well. The crowd was delighted to see two unicorns. Suddenly, I noticed Creepy in the crowd. I invited her to the stage and she didn't mind. After the show, we explained ourselves and Creepy forgave me. She says she liked me in my natural dark outfit much more. <laughs> Meanwhile, our parents came up with a business plan to promote our new music band. But Light finally got the courage to say no. He refused to follow such a tough schedule and began to experiment with style. As for me, I'm just glad that everyone's honest and happy now.
Yay!
Oh. 